More subdued pro day for Ohio State today, at least in terms of the fanfare. Big deal for all the guys who are participating, obviously. But no Marvin Harrison Jr. and no other first-round guys like we had last year with C.J. Stroud, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, uh, Paris Johnson, like guys in the middle to go uh, high in this draft. But uh, some other guys, we got to see Mike Hall Jr. work out. We got to see Cade Stover work out. We got to see Javier Johnson for the first time because he did not get invited to the NFL Combine. Tommy Eichenberg, Steel Chambers, like all those, all the other like late career guys that are going through the draft process were here for the most part working out. Mayan Williams being one of the, the notable examples, still coming back from an injury. So, Andrew, I'm going to start with you. Who do you think helped themselves a lot with their pro day performance today i would say mike hall i, I was pretty impressed with the way that he ran uh the so the numbers just for people that maybe not, that may not know the numbers are very you know very different sometimes they fluctuate because you've got 32 different stopwatches you've got 32 different people kind of watching you've got 32 different sets of eyes like every, more than 32 it's every yahoo sure, from our group yeah, that's yeah, over yeah. there with a with a stopwatch well, too the ones that matter uh the people the people that are the people that are writing all this down for what actually matters uh so mike hall said that he ran in the four sixes to four sevens uh again unofficial we'll see how that is but he said he was also weighing at 298 and 298, I think, is a really good size for him. I don't know if he'll play at 298, but even if you drop a few pounds, like that size and that speed is is something that's really important. So, again, he said he's healthy. He said he feels good. Um, when he goes into a season and goes into a camp, I think a team is really going to like him at a three-tech defensive tackle because you're talking about a guy who he is a little bit smaller when you talk about defensive linemen, but he was talking about how that helps him, how that kind of helps him with leverage. And I just think when you talk about Mike Hall kind of collapsing the pocket, that is exactly what you want in a three-tech defensive tackle so I thought he looked good today I thought he moved well today and for a guy that is not you know six foot four and 330 pounds like some defensive tackles are you have to be that kind of quick and that kind of mobile and that kind of fast and I think he was today so I was really impressed with my call he said at the combine he did want to get bigger than what his playing weight was this past year I think he was listed at like 285 or something like that this past year 288 he wanted to be higher than that um his broad jump I think I heard them say nine three that would have been the sixth best broad jump among defensive tackles at the combine so I I, I agree with Mike Hall I mean I think he had a great day today um especially because he didn't work out at the combine because his thing is he's only got three years of film really two he's got two years of film he was hurt a decent amount of that time and the production wasn't um, over the top, right? So it's it's all about projecting him athletically, and I think when he puts up some of the numbers he's been able to put up at the size he is, I think it's going to help him from that realm. Anyone else that you thought helped themselves, Stephen? Yeah, and I'm going to break the rules a little bit, which is why I'm glad you went with Andrew first and go with nobody who was going through the draft process this year. We have seen this, Nathan, a couple – dating back to when Justin Fields was going through his pro day and Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave were his receivers, where it feels like – Scouts got a chance to get a year early preview of what's coming down the line here. And I remember when we're watching that, it's like, ooh, look at what Garrett Wilson's doing. Ooh, look at what Chris Olave is doing. And this next year with C.J. Stroud doing it. Then the year after that is where the – Marvin Harrison had a pro day last year, guys. That's probably why he didn't do it this year. J.T. Tuimaloa and Jack Sawyer were the other defensive linemen doing defensive lineman drills today. And Tyleek Williams was supposed to be with him, but he had class, so he had to back out at the last minute. Hey, that's what he told me. That's all I can go off of. But that was the plan to have those four go because there's just not a lot of defensive linemen going. And I think, one, that helped Mike Hall because their edge rushers, he's a tackle, and he was keeping up with them in the drills. And defensive tackles are not supposed to do that, so kudos to Mike Hall once again. But – I think we can start having the conversations of who we might think go, goes higher between Jack Sawyer and JT Tuimaloa if they spend the next year turning themselves into bona fide first-round draft picks, which I think they might. And this might have been what, the, what it was for Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, C.J. Stroud, uh, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Maybe not to the same length because those guys are top 15 picks. I'm not sure if they'll do that or not. But guys got a chance to get an early look on what might be the best one-two punch edge rushing duo in the country this year. And if this turns into something in the fall and then next spring we're going through this and it feels like mock drafts have both of those guys at top 20 picks, it started here when NFL scouts got a chance to get an early look on those guys. I mean, the whole thing had stopped at that point, and that's the only drill that was going on. Every every eye in here was focused on them because we were all waiting for the quarterbacks. All the media was waiting for the quarterbacks, but it was good to watch those guys. And I think you're right. It's going to be very interesting to watch that comparison between the two of them because it could hinge a little bit on – who's drafting where and how they project each of those two guys. We were just talking to Jim Knowles a couple weeks ago about the concept of them maybe at the next level can fit in a 3-4 situation as outside linebackers. And if some 
pro, uh, franchise sees that in them and is drafting high, then maybe that makes more sense for them than the other guy who they don't project quite the same way. I want to say a quick word here. Xavier Johnson didn't get to go to the combine. People were a little bit surprised he didn't get invited to the combine. I think I get it that he, you know, he doesn't have maybe the same profile as the guys that get invited to the combine especially maybe when you compare him to all other receivers but he seems like a guy who could be useful on an nfl roster just the abundance of things that he can do obviously from an attitude standpoint it's off the charts so anytime he can be around nfl personnel i think he's probably going to impress them in that regard um so to come here today and just get some work in at, at this level and he said he's talked to about 20 teams at the Hula Bowl. Says he has continued talking to some other teams since then. So we'll see if something works out for him, either a UFA situation or if somebody takes a shot late in the draft for him because I think he proved that he could do dynamic things at this level, even if he didn't get a chance to do them every snap um, of, the, of the game. Um, more talk about this on Buckeye Talk. We're going to talk about all these things uh, that we saw today at Pro Day and get the text 614-350-3315 because as we were seeing things and hearing things, watching things today, that's where we were going with it first.